Today I've got the latest tablet from Samsung, the Galaxy Note 10.1. It is a workhorse by comparison to the Galaxy Tab 2 range, with impressive specs tucked inside a familiar build. Of particular note is the impressive A9 quad-core processor and 2GB of RAM that should deliver a smooth and seamless experience. It is fantastic to see Samsung supporting the consumers with the top-end computing power, however, it is only running Android 4.0 and not the forthcoming Jelly Bean. This makes it essentially the 10.1 inch model of their phablet, the 5.3 inch Galaxy Note phone. This means once again, the inclusion of the S Pen, Samsung's take on the stylus, will be expected to take centre stage. Now comes the fun. Opening the package we get first glimpse at the Galaxy Note 10.1. We were given the 16 gig Wi-Fi only model. It does come in 32 gig and 3G variants with LTE variants arriving later. Inside the box comes the standard accessories the user manual, warranty, etc. You get your region specific AC adapter which connects up to the AC adapter module. The module also houses the USB cable with proprietary connector. You'll get a set of white earphones. Samsung also gives some in-ear gel additions for these earphones and finally some more ends for the S Pen. As is to be expected the device is covered literally every inch with plastic protective coatings which I will mostly skip through for your benefit. The device looks fine, very much the same as the Galaxy Tab 2 range. It is very plastic in build, but without feeling flimsy. This gives them advantages in weight and thickness compared to your third generation iPad. The top edge of the device houses your earphone jack, an infrared blaster for TV remote control, SD card slot, volume control and power slash lock button. It would also house a SIM card slot in the 3G variant. The bottom of the device houses the proprietary connection, not a micro USB. Both side bevels house the speakers toward the top of the device, the front panel has a 1.9 megapixel camera and the rear a 5 megapixel camera capable of full HD recording. Booting up the device is the standard run of sign-ins. Taking the time here makes it far more convenient to get started straight away, particularly as it allows you to restore stored settings from previous Samsung devices. Once finished, you're brought to the familiar Android home screens. The touch is very responsive, there doesn't appear to be any lagging or latency issues. Shock horror, that's what you get when you give a tablet true backing power. The bottom left hand corner of the screen houses the back, home, task manager and screen capture buttons permanently accessible on screen. The S Pen is seamlessly tucked away into the tablet's chassis. Without delving too deep and ruining the full review, the S Pen functions as well as touch. Its use feels natural on the larger form factor and the screen itself grabs to it. A line of Samsung mini apps are available along the bottom line of the tablet and a full registry of stored applications and widgets are found in the top right hand corner. So far my experience with the Galaxy Note 10.1 have been positive, but stay tuned for the full review where I'll open up what truly is a hit and what fell far short of expectations. This has been Kurt from Kabutech. Stay tuned.